Well, hello, beautiful hello. everyone. So welcome to Let's Talk. And this is Christopher Buckle, you guys. Hey, everybody. How are you? Everybody locked in, safe and sound? Well, I hope so. So hi, everyone. Welcome to Let's Talk. And this is my third guest. And I'm so excited because we're today with the legendary Christopher Buckle. Not only is he legendary with his work, he has worked on just about every famous stars that we all love so much. Mac Madonna, Christina Aguilera, and many, many more. Mariah. So that's, um, oh, of course, our friend, I like to call her my friend, yeah. Mariah. <laughs> She's more your friend, but I got an opportunity to work her with, with her as well. So today, guys, we're going to dive into some of the history of Christopher Buckle, because we, we can go online, download just about every tutorial that he has done, and learn a lot from that. But today, I want you guys to learn who Christopher Buckle is and where he's from and what he's going to do next. So let's dive right in, Mr. Okay. Christopher Buckle. <laughs> so I know that you're a true New Yorker. You were born and raised in New York. I am such a New Yorker. I um, Yeah, about 100 years ago, I was born in Queens. And, um, I, <laughs> but I grew up in Long Island. You know, mm. Long Island. And um, Where's your Long yeah. Island accent? What? Where's that Long Island accent? Well, I've done my best to kind of erase it. <laughs> But um, yeah, it's, you know, it's there. It's, um, <laughs> it comes out when I'm joking around. I can turn into Barbara Streisand in like two seconds. It's oh, I love that. Frightening, yeah. Uh, you can probably do a makeup beat that just transform yourself into Barbara. <laughs> if anybody could, you could. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I used to be a Boy George impersonator in the 80s. Oh my gosh, I, I can see that. So yeah. your history is so incredible. One of the things I read about you is that you were a punk kid and you... You put makeup on yourself since you were seven years old. Take us yeah. through that. I was just a, I was always just fascinated, fascinated by um, transformation. And I loved puppets and I loved dolls and I liked things that were a little bit creepy. And then, um, and transform myself. And I just liked working on a three dimensional more than flat. Like I was never good at painting like you, <laughs> and I just, um, I was much better on a three-dimensional. So it just kind of, trend, you know, I started putting more and more and more makeup on. And so I was very involved with the New York City club scene. And I did the doors and VIP rooms at um, Limelight and Webster Hall. And I worked- Well, so Lake before you dive in there, um, a lot of our audience here are probably quite young and they don't know what club scene is. Give well, us good for a, them. a picture of what a club scene is. Well, the New York City club scene was very um, interesting, really colorful. The, the, the best way to describe it is we would take these old spaces, these big, old, grand theaters, and then they would be transformed into these beautiful, decadent nightclubs that housed and could fill many, like thousands of people. And so there would be a huge crowd out onto the street and there was usually a door person that would select who was going to come in for the evening. And usually- so was had this, Christopher, was this in a, just in a gay community, the trans community, no, or was this no, open no, no, to no. everyone? No, um, these clubs were so big that they couldn't just be gay clubs. They were oh. clubs for everyone. And that was also what made it so magical back then because they were not segregated clubs. You know, there were always gay bars and stuff like that. and sports bars and things like that but these clubs had everybody so you would have the you know gloria vanderbilt would be dancing wow. in a beaded gown and uh you would have you know keith herring or warhol in the vip lounge and then you would have punk kids and gay guys and every color every everything just just everyone partied and had a great time together. And there was just- It was like Studio 54 revamped. Well, I was a little bit after Studio 54, but I started going out very young, thankfully. So I did get to go to some of the greatest clubs there were, definitely. And so as a club kid, your responsibility is to dress up and create a lot of, a lot of pizzazz when you show up at these events, correct? Pizzazz. Yes, and actually I'm gonna plug my friend's book because I'm actually in it. But oh, my, friend, my friend Walt Paper put out this book oh. and it's called New York City Club Kids by Walt Paper. And um, it's 
a book that really encapsulates the whole moment of when it just became its biggest moment. And this, at this time I was working at the limelight. I was um, working the VIP rope to Disco 2000, which was a party that they had there. And, um, but it's a really a colorful book. And it's, a, it's just, it's, if you're not, if you're curious, that's the best way to, to see it. Well, it's super educational in the way of understanding um, beauty from that perspective. Because I do know a lot of makeup artists came out of that era and I seen pictures of them, made themselves into puzzle pieces. And the art form itself was so spectacular. It's it, it, only way I could describe it was pizzazz. That's all I could. It, it was it's about so pushing the limits and it had yeah. nothing to do with reality. It had to do with bending reality and creating and, your own world and your and, own reality. And, and for and me, that's so and, refreshing to learn when I, as a photographer, I, from Asia, I don't have that exposure. So guys, references are so important. And looking at history is so important. So I encourage you to pick up this book and I will get one and hopefully I'll get a science signature one since he's your friend. Um, so, so do look at this and do study this because when I, when I dove into beauty and fashion, I think education was the most important. And, and this is where I first actually uh, got to know Christopher's name is that when I was looking through Italian Vogue and I was looking through all the magazine that I was so inspired by as a young photographer and his name would be pretty pop up and I just like I was so fascinated to, to, to want to know how you got there and how he got there and how can I travel the same path and, and reach that level so that's why I'm so happy to, to talk to you today um, one other thing I like to do is flash back when you were really young I saw mm -hmm. pictures of you with spiky hair with completely painted with spider eyes makeup what mm -hmm. inspired you to to first to paint yourself rather than paint others? Well, I was always, you know, I, I, from as long as I can remember, I was made fun of and I never fit in. And I did my best to try at a young age to fit in with other little boys and little girls. And no matter how hard I tried, they could still identify me as somebody who just did not fit in. Wow. And I realized that, well, if I'm going to get, have to go through all of this, I might as well, I'm going to get made fun of if I'm trying to fit in. So why even bother trying? Wow. So I just let it rip. And I just express myself through my makeup. And um, I also probably used it as armor because I made myself look very intimidating. And did it work? Made, and I was made fun of for being like a pretty boy. And I just made it prettier. But did your armor work for you? Oh, yeah. It worked. Nobody, so, like, I was scary looking. When you just told the story, it gave me chills because I remember back when I was seven years old in Taiwan and, and I too was that kid that was so awkward in so many ways that I couldn't fit in. And I remember one year I made a mask of a rabbit and I would wear it every day, literally every single day That's when so I'm cute. outside. I love that. Um, <laughs> cute now, but back then I did not realize what I was doing. If I, I was masking and covering and hiding and creating an alternate universe so that I can belong and, and how amazing and blessed we are all working in an industry of a, I think it's a alternate universe. What we get to do is so spectacular and what you get to do on a daily basis is incredible. And, and, and for those of you guys who, who know makeup artists out there, the YouTubers out there, there are makeup artists and there are legendary makeup artists. And then there's celebrity makeup artists. And I use that word strongly with Christopher Buckle because there are celebrity makeup artists work on celebrities. And then there are celebrity makeup artists as celebrity themselves. And, and that's who's with us today. So right. Christopher, Thank when you. you started, when you, when you got spotted on the street of New York with his full mask on and gets a job at Metropolitan Opera, how does this happen? Or someone I, like you. I worked at this punk store called Flip. It was on 8th Street, just a few blocks down from Patricia Fields, where I later worked. But I sold love her. Love oh, her. Yeah. Love her. It's amazing her. and dear to my heart. Um, anyway, I worked at this, this big punk store, and like Nina Hagen, who's the queen of punk, would come in there and stuff and shop. And, but anyway, I was on my way home. I was on the escalator in Penn Station going back to Long Island, Hicksville, Long Island. And uh, this woman stopped me and said, who did, 
who did this work on your face? Wow. Did you do this? And I said, yeah, I did it. And she's like, this is my card. I need you to call me after eight o'clock tonight. And this is before cell phones. This is like 1987, I guess. Or, yeah, 87. And I called her and she gave me a job at the Metropolitan Opera. Just like that. The, yeah, well, I worked in the summer. It was um, for this production, St. Sebastian by the Paris Opera Ballet. And um, I had to do all of this very like intense Gothic makeup. It was very stylized makeup for the Paris Opera Ballet. And uh, it was exactly kind of like what I was doing to myself. So it jumped out at her. And um, that's, yeah, that's how but, it all started. But and then how it, did you go from wanting to just use makeup as a mask and cover it to become an artistry and technique? Because that's what, when I see your makeup, when I see your work, I know it's you, how it carves beautifully, how it shades beautifully. And, and the touch, the way you put makeup on skin is such a signature to your work. When did it go from, this is just an armor to become, this is actually what I can do for others and make them feel beautiful? Well, I was very insecure always. As an artist, I think that just goes with it. You know, I wasn't like, I'm amazing. You know, no, like I, even to this day, I'm just constantly trying to just prove that I'm not terrible. You know, um, I did my makeup so big and I taught myself how to do makeup just through trial and error, but I made all of my mistakes so big because my makeup was so big and my shape, my, I used to shave my eyebrows off and everything so that when I started doing makeup on other people that didn't want to look like they were from another planet, I just took the same concepts that I learned big and I kept shrinking them down and shrinking mm -hmm. them down and shrinking them down. And eventually it just became, I think, a signature look that is structural and shape oriented. I'm not an artist that uses tons of colors. If you look at the, the scope of my work, I don't use crazy colors and bright things. And um, I am really shape oriented. I'm into mm. sculpture, sculpting the face and manipulating the eye shape and symmetry and precision. And that's but the kind of art I am. Who was your influence back then? Was it something like somebody like Kevin O'Quan? Was there other makeup artist work that's out there that, that, that inspire you to create your looks? Um, Yes. Well, you know, every, I was never, a, I loved everybody who did anything that I just related to or that mm -hmm. just dragged my eye, you know, like any, like sometimes I could just like an eyebrow and not like anything else or, but you just adhere to what you like. And uh, I loved Kevin and I did know him. Uh, Way Bandy was mm. one of the very first makeup artists that, that was like known other than like the classics like Max Factor and Joe Blasco right. and people like that. But um, I, my mother had his book, um, Way Bandies. And so I remember as a kid, I would always look at this and he would use like a number two pencil on, like <sighs> along a lash line. I mean, he was just like, you know, very innovative and he was resourceful. And I related to that because even when I was a punk, I had no money. And so, and makeup was much more, um, limited back then like you didn't have access to bright primary colored makeup in long island and hicksville or even in the city it was hard to find so i would take um colored pastels chalks from art class wow. from high school and i would crush them down and i would use like the neon green or the bright bright primary yellows and intense magentas and i would use those as my as my eyeshadow and blush i would be oh. very stained my face would be stained for a long time after, but it was worth it. Well, you, you spoke of your mother just now. When you were going through the transition and, and growing up, cr creating these art that you're doing now, but through the time of you applying makeup on yourself and to where you are today, what's that like for your mom to watch? And what was her reaction when you were at such a young age and started doing art on yourself? My mom, my mom was, I think, worried for me. She was worried about my safety. She was worried mm. about me being beaten up on the streets. I, I woke up every morning and painted my face at five in the morning and then would go to the bus stop and go to school at seven. That's I was, brave. 
That's how That's I live. Brave. You were so brave. I wasn't, I wasn't a weekend warrior. You know what I mean? Like I was in it. This is how I lived. And um, my mother was just worried, but she, for some reason, she had a problem with lipstick more than anything. Like I could have a shaved off Marlena Dietrich eyebrows on like this, upper and lower lashes, makeup that like my lower makeup came to here. And it was the Lucille Ball lip that just drove her nuts. She just didn't. <laughs> She, she didn't like it. Did, when was the first time you got to do makeup on your mom? I used to watch my mom get ready. And I would, because my mother used to sell like this disco makeup. It was a brand called Stepping Out Cosmetics. Wow. And it this was is awesome. like this, it was all of these like bright, shiny colors, you know, like very Donna Summer kind of things. And so she'd be doing her makeup and I would watch and I would always, I started to just see things that I wanted her to do. And so I just would suggest, and then she would do them. And then she'd be like, oh, that does look good. And then I would do the same thing with my sister. And my sister was paranoid that I was gonna make her look like a punk rocker all the time. So. <laughs> well, I, I also know that this, this is a story that I really want you to share because it, 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 I, my skin crossed when I read this the first time about you, how you were, your first major talent you did makeup on was actually Kate Moss, and that completely transformed your career. I, I, let's share that story with us. Well, I, I did many things. So I'm gonna just back, go backwards a little bit. Where I, uh, I did work, I did makeup always. And, mm -hmm. but it was some, I always wanted to be an entertainer. I wanted to perform, I sang, I acted. So I was, I put out a record in 91. What dance. kind of music was it? It was, it was a techno record with a vocal, with this operatic vocal that I did over it. But anyway. You know so I'm going to have to for... find that, right? You're gonna, you know oh, you have to send so me the pretty. MP3. It's going to be the theme song for this episode. <laughs> it's pretty damn bad. But I did it. I did it. And, uh, but anyway, so then I was working at Patricia Fields and I got hired to be at Madonna's sex book party. So I was in a kissing booth and I had to kiss Madonna basically. So, but Steven Mizell came in with her and everything. So now I got a job at an agency in like 93. I just wanted the normal life. I just wanted health insurance. So I got a job <laughs> at Oz New York, which was a, the top agency for hair and makeup people. They represented Laura Mercier, Francois Nars, Garen for hair, Serge Namont, everybody that was like the top. And so I worked there for three years and one day, Laura Mercier um, called from set. She was shooting an American Vogue cover with Steven Mizell and Kate had to get on a plane or something and leave earlier than they expected. And so we were trying to find an assistant to go help her and so that they can get ready on time. And we couldn't find anybody. And finally, Laura was just like, just send, just send Christopher, just get Christopher here. I need an extra set of hands. So I showed up and at Industria Studios and Laura was like, oh, Christopher, this is Kate. Kate, this is Christopher. Um, just do a bronze eye and a nude lip. And she was doing Amber Valletta's makeup at the time. So I just used Laura's makeup and her brushes and stuff. And I was like, I didn't, I didn't know that an assistant like did someone's makeup. I just thought that I would like put lotion on someone's leg or something. So I did Kate's makeup and I followed uh, Laura's direction. But when, uh, when she, we got on set, Steven really liked the way Kate looked. And Laura was like, well, C Christopher did her makeup. I didn't do it. Wow. And Steven was like, and then I was walking out of the makeup area onto set and he was like, Christopher, he's like, what are you doing here? I said, I'm doing makeup. And he goes, yes, you are. Wow. And what amazing, amazing support from your peer and from your mentor at the time, sure, to give yeah. you the opportunity and give you the credit. Because in this industry, oh, we know. all know there are a little bit of a, a say, competitiveness in our business. I definitely yeah. know that, that experience of myself. And, but for you to have Laura hand you the baton in a way to well, this uh, opportunity, uh, how awesome is that? It was amazing. And 
Stephen then hired, um, booked me for the cover of Italian Vogue and a 20 page story. I saw and that then, story, and if we get clearance, I'll go ahead and hold that up on the YouTube version of this, because I don't want to get in trouble for usage. Um, but uh, yes, you guys must Google Christopher's work. A lot of the work that we're going to talk about today, like Christina Aguilera, Mariah Carey, and so forth, um, I can't actually legally use the photos until we get clearance. So if we get clearance, we'll really? Just on, yes, because the rights of photographer, as you know, is very protective. Um, I, I do have a couple that I want to share, and I'll take a risk on those. <laughs> but so, so now you're 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 now on set with the legendary Stephen Mazel. And for those guys, for you guys who don't know Stephen, that Stephen is the is the quintessential fashion photographer has reshaped the industry. He's iconic the way he shoots, always classic, never so crazy that you don't know his work. It's so recognizable. And what I love about his work is always conceptual. And I thought. When I heard the story that you worked with Stephen the first time, it made so much sense to me because he loves to create and not a lot. Stephen's very reclusive. Can you give us a little bit of story about your relationship with Stephen? Well, even on set, it was always kind of, he was very mysterious. Um, you know, hair and makeup would show up hours earlier and begin getting all the girls ready. And then he would show up. And then he would give like very light direction and then he would show up hours later and then either just love it and go, or he would have a suggestion. You know, Stephen, like many of us, is not just a photographer. He knows right. how to do makeup. He knows, wow. he knows why it works. He knows how to give really specific direction with it. And um, when, he, when, when he came in, he was like, um, what do you want to do? And I knew at the time that if I did what was popular at the time, I knew this was an amazing opportunity. So I knew that if I did what everyone else was doing in fashion in makeup, it wouldn't get attention. So I wanted to do the opposite of what was happening in a way, because it was all grunge at the time and black mm -hmm. greasy eyes and oily skin and just like miserable models, <laughs> you know, starving to death <laughs> on heroin, some of them. Um, but I want to see in reality kind of cross over each other really closely during that time. <laughs> yes. I just wanted to make them look pristine, beautiful and clean like dolls, you know, and just be like alabaster, perfect skin. And just, I started that stained lip kind of a thing mm. that was popular back then. And, and it did get attention because of that, which le led me to Mariah actually. Oh, yes. We, we have to talk about the queen, an uh, icon, the Mar Mariah. So, and I will jump ahead to tell the story that I think that it will, can lead the way with you. Is that I had the opportunity to work with Mariah, and, and we did a Vegas um, poster cover together for her residency in Las Vegas. That was my first time working with her, and what an experience, and meaning that understanding how the artists work and how she, she paced herself throughout the day, and... and I hear lots of stories from everybody before I work with her. Oh, she's going to take a while in the hair and makeup room. She, her call time is not always the same. You have to be very flexible. And after that day working, after that day working with her, I understood that oh, yeah. it is not what people may think that it's a diva situation. I, when I met her, she held my hand. She looked me in the eyes. She learned my name and she never forget it again. And it's, it's incredible to be in the presence of someone who, it's so public and so exposed, but yet give you that personal time. And I know she does that for you because when you were on QBC, she would dial in and support you. Uh, when yeah. I saw that, I, was, I thought, wow, not just a friendship. This goes beyond a friendship. What you and her have is transcends beyond time because I know her time is so valuable. To get her at a certain place at a certain time is almost impossible. So that kind of gives a pivotal point of her relationship with you for me when I think that she will make that time to dial in and speak on your behalf. What an endorsement and, and tell us more about your relationship with her the last, how many years? 15, 20? We don't talk about time. Mariah doesn't like that. <laughs> <laughs> so, Nor do we really. <laughs> I met Mariah when, um, just before the Butterfly album was being released. Wow. So you could do the math. But yes. one of my earliest memories of, I remember something really sweet. Um, we were pressed for time and the, the lights 
kept going out in the place where we were shooting, or I think it was a TV show thing. It was like the the dressing room lights kept going out, and I was like hustling and being nervous. And I said, "Please, please, just you know, let me just get, get this." And, and and she stopped and held my hands with the brush in it, and she goes, "Just relax. I have faith in you." She's wow. Like, you and so, like, I was very green you know, in the beginning of my career because I didn't test like most makeup artists do or did at the time. I didn't do any of those preliminary things. Like I was just always thrown right into the fire. And so I always felt like any second I was gonna be found out that I was, you know, an imposter. I think we all have that insecurity in us and I still do. And I, I, I think of that when major models who have worked with everyone under the sun show up on my set and I'm always like, Oh, oh my God, <laughs> what is she gonna say when she's always yeah. part of us, always growing and, and, and a bit nervous, you know? <laughs> yeah, of course. Um, you know, like I remember walking up to Madonna's door in California and having to like ring the doorbell. I like drove my Toyota rental car to her. And I'm like this, and as I'm walking, I'm like, this is like weird that I'm like, I have to ring Madonna's doorbell. That, that's a lot. Like, well, the then, question is, do you still feel that way now you have so many years of experience working with them? Do you still feel like that doorbell is, is a magical? Is, do you still have that anticipation? Like, wow, I'm ringing Madonna's doorbell. Well, I've never, I, this is the thing. I'm not a fanny kind of a person. And I've had to, from a very young age, I was meeting people like Andy Warhol and, and, Grace Jones and many people from the eighties, like bands that I won't even mention saying because no one's, you know, <laughs> the bangles. <laughs> hey, I <laughs> love the Mr. bangles. <laughs> Depeche Mode, like I hung out with these people. So like I, um, I was used, I'm used to that, but I never lose clarity on the weight of a moment and that wow. everybody doesn't get these moments. And so, not just for myself, but for all the people that don't get to have these opportunities, I, I need to absorb it and pay attention and appreciate it. And that's something so special about you. I can let the, our viewers know that my experience meeting Christopher Buckle for the very first time was actually in a Toronto film festival. And his name has come up so many times with different publicists saying, you have to work with him, you have to work with him. And our path is did not cross. But I remember this day at these festivals, it's a junket that the celebrities are passed from one room to the other, one, one hotel to another, and it's a very hectic day. And I believe at the time was Jessica Chastain that was uh -huh. with you that day. And I remember when she walked in with Nicole Perna, I believe that was next to you. We love and Nicole. We love Nicole. And I remember I didn't, I didn't see Jessica at that time. I had worked with her already and my eyes were so drawn to you. And one that I knew your name, and two, that I knew what you represented in this industry and who we have worked with. And I was doing a film festival. As a photographer, being at a film festival is not what everybody think you would do. You do big studio shoots, but I fought to be there. And, and by the way, you don't get paid to be at a film festival. You shoot because you want to meet the people like Christopher. You want to meet other people. What a great way. It's like a reunion for one day. Oh, uh -huh. actually three days. So when I saw you, you have this incredible quiet confidence about you that is so loud and radiant. And you were with her, you were holding her hand, and you took the time, look over, and you waved. And I, I was speechless. I was like, oh my gosh, this, is, this guy is next to a major celebrity, star, whatever you want to call it, but he's taking the time to acknowledge me. And that was so special for me. And I remember that day, come up to you, he says, I would love to work with you. And I couldn't keep my eyes off you because your eyes were so blue and your skin was so perfect. And... I, I, it made me realize that you were, you were almost like alien to me. And that, that's <laughs> when I met you. I'm like, wow, I get it. Like, you know, sometimes people, you, you would just scratch your head and goes, why do people think he's so great? Or why is this person so, so X, Y, Z? But when you meet somebody like Christopher, all those answer, all those questions are answered. Because oh, you, it, it's, it's, I have, listen, we all work with so many different people in this industry, so many different personalities. And that's something that I, I keep saying on this, this talk is that collaboration and humility goes a long, long way. And with somebody like you, you could, if we work together, you couldn't 
you could toss me aside like no you're not good enough and no, oh no, I'm, I'm at this level and this you're thing. not that artist you've never no. been that artist and your reputation Look. has never been that and thank you for that for our industry's sake you can you should never have to thank somebody for being kind and and a good person we need to just move from that place but i will tell you there's no attitude with me when it comes to better or like it because we're always always learning another thing how much attitude can i have or judgment against anybody when i worked in a bathroom as an attendant okay like i handed people the paper towel like i checked coats i did whatever it took to just make ends meet and you know all these jobs are have to happen to keep the machine going so whether you're a photographer a makeup artist a hairdresser the person that sweeps up at the end of the night it's all part of what it is that we do you know well i want to i want to go back to your relationship with mariah um, uh -huh. what what has it been like that you worked on her for a while we won't say the time um as she evolved as an artist how have you seen your work evolve with her and the transformation over the years of looks that you guys have done what sticks out the most to you Ooh. Well, when I first met Mariah um, during, it was right before the butterfly right. album. And it was kind of, it was a moment of her um, coming out, you know, and kind of coming into herself. And I just remember her showing me clothes that she was wearing that were very sexy, but I felt like her makeup didn't catch up, you know? And so we were, slowly just evolving into into what that would be for her and mm -hmm. i think it came to a place where she has a signature look um as far like you know in the 90s makeup was different it was a different approach now there's it now it's very like more is more and lots of lots and so when i look back you know i i see that we used to use little individual lashes and you know everything was just less and now you know it's more diva and she she deserved that diva makeup and the diva pound i mean oh, she no, is. She's, mariah's earned every every every, every everything that she, and including the songwriters hall of fame which is um going to be soon and and also for for you to being so close side by side with her and mariah's a human being guys right there are, there are days that she's a good mood there are days that she's bad mood that there are days she's travel so much she's bloated and there are days i feel like makeup artists you guys are i'm not just there to make them feel beautiful on the outside but your responsibility carries more beyond that you're there to hold their hands and make them feel better for whatever situation they're in and i'm sure that's why it makes you guys friendship so strong well i think with no matter who you're working with i think that um we we always deal with the aesthetic the outside but you can always, you know, beauty does come from the inside ultimately. So if you can instill confidence or love or security to someone inside, no matter what you do on the outside with makeup and hair and stuff, they're going to look more beautiful because they're going to carry themselves with a sense of, you know, confidence, security or whatever, you know, feeling protected like that when somebody feels protected, then they're, they're more likely to be them, their full selves. So really, when you're dealing with human beings and people and touching them, there's such a deeper effect than any kind of look that you could create on, on their face. And that transcends because as a photographer, I'm, in, I'm behind the camera. I, I can only capture what's in front of me. And I try, I can connect as much as I can, but there's, there's a digital box, there's a machine in front that, that's a, that takes us just one step away. And I try to make that effort as well and, 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 and hold their hand, touch them, somehow to have some kind of connection with the artist. And because we don't have that intimacy of two hours perhaps in a makeup and hair room to know what their day's like. When they come up, we have to act so fast. And, and hair makeup teams are, are my spies in, in that room. I, I said that all the time. They are my confidants to gauge how I should be that day as a photographer. And, and that's a true collaboration comes from all 360s when we do that. And, and you embody that and I love it. So- well, I will tell you, just a side note, I haven't, I have known Mariah for so many years and I really have seen very few bad days. 
Okay, wow. like, he is <laughs> consistent. Horrible things are happening, and we are cracking jokes and just laughing our way through it because things are going to happen. You could freak out, and it's not going to change anything, you know. So you might as well just have some fun with it, and you'll get past it, and it'll be fine. So, yeah, she is consistently always just fun. Really. Well, I read an interview a few years back that. On Christopher Buckle's bucket list, so it's a bucket list that you always <laughs> wanted to work with Sheer. So yes. since have you had a chance to work with her? Yes, I have. And you know, I I wrote a list years ago of like my wish list, which was like Liza Minnelli, Cher, Madonna. I, I wrote a list, and I ended up working with everybody. Wow! Um, wow! Wow! List. Wow! But Cher, I met Cher on the set of Burlesque. Because I shot the movie Burlesque with Christina Aguilera,、mm. so I met Cher there, and then、um, I Cher had asked if I would do her makeup, and I got to tell you that I flew to Vegas to do it, and I was nervous because to me, like, it's very strange when you're a little boy watching television with your grandmother, and you're watching someone like Cher. Sunny and Cher show, whatever, and then years later, you're like touching her face, you know, and talking with her and doing all these like same thing with Liza Minnelli. It's just like I was in a drive-in movie theater with my family watching Cabaret when it came out, <laughs> and now I'm doing her makeup. This is Judy Garland's daughter. It's, it's just incredible. That stuff. It's just like, but I was definitely nervous with Cher, but she is such a cool lady. Just sweet, and she's the original cool girl. You know, she's just、right. a cool chick. So the list been checked off. Anybody new that you have added onto that list that we're hoping to work with in the future? Hmm. I don't know. I feel like I've done so many. Let I've done a lot of legends too, like Catherine Deneuve, and I did Twiggy's makeup. Um. I did Anne Margaret's makeup.、Uh, wow. I don't know. Like I, I've done so many that I'm. I don't want to be greedy about it. Like I, I it, opportunity always comes, and as I will, I'll do it as it as it comes. But I can't think of anyone off the top of my head. Elvira. Oh my God, that would be amazing. <laughs> I met Elvira this year, but um, Cassandra. Um, she, she, um, I would do her makeup as her because she. I think she's got the Elvira thing down, and it's you know it's. It has to be what it is. Well, not only do you work with all these celebrities, you also an entrepreneur. You have a line of your own that's out there with your name. I do. And and、uh, tell us the,、uh, what, how, where, when, can, where can we get it? Okay. Well, you can get my makeup at christopherbuckle dot com, and if you go to my Instagram page, there's a link.、Um, you can order from there, and we ship it out. I was on QVC for a while, but I stopped doing that. And yeah, I'm designing more stuff, developing more products. But there's my Triplicity Foundation, which is super popular. It's like a cult favorite, and my setting powder, Cast and Call. Like, there is no better. So,、uh, those are a couple things that people are just obsessed with, and that I constantly am getting feedback and fan mail and everything about. So, and that's what I use on my clients. So. And as the makeup culture have changed, do you feel like you have to constantly be chasing that relevancy in the products you do, also the technique that you work with on people these days? I, I'm an anti. I don't like trends. I just don't like them, because I think that if you can always add a touch of something to like keep yourself, you know, trendy or whatever. But I don't like following trends. I think that it's important for you to know who you are. And to develop a look and hone in your technique so that you look your absolute best as you. You can't keep changing who you are constantly. And、um, I don't know. I just think that's. I think if we look at all, each of ourselves as a brand of ourselves, think of how you want to represent that. I. That's the approach I have with all of my clients too. Like I really try to keep them looking consistent. I mean, for a photo shoot. Or a fashion shoot, like we could do something experimental, like Christina Aguilera. 
her identity is more experimental. And so very I Very beautiful work. I wish I could I, hold up the work, but we'll, we'll have it linked to your web page and, and the, the work you've done with the album packaging. I believe Alex, Alex Malcolm shot that shoe. Is that yes, correct? Yes. Oh, good. <laughs> I remember yes. that shoe. And the reason I remember that shoe is I was up for that job and I didn't get it. <laughs> so, oh. No, but Christina, funny story is that I know Christina and she won't remember me, but I know her from Genie in a Bottle. And I was an editing supervisor in the room. I'm watching the edit go down when that music video was being in the editing room. So I came from post-production world. So, so I, oh my gosh. I mean, <laughs> amazing work, <laughs> amazing work. But so with, with, I was gonna ask you this and that you just, you kind of answered it already is that which artists that you work with that really allow you to take chances? Cause for example, for me, Mariah has a look that you created over the decades and years what, uh, <laughs> creating this look for her. And it's ever evolving. And then there's the new work that you do on Erica Jane that I actually love that you take chances with. And so with all these A-listers who are putting, a lot of us in their ways, who really allow you to take chances with them? Um, Mariah definitely has her moments though, like within her world, like she likes to, play a little bit mm. and find new things. Um, but Christina, I always did really extreme things with. I started working with her during um, Back to Basics. Right. And I did the Candyman video and the Hurt video. And then we did Keeps Getting Better and Bionic and all those videos. Um, but yeah, I mean, like, Christina was probably the most experimental, but even when I did Jennifer Lopez for the Hold It, Don't Drop It video, we did, a, she was pregnant. And so, you know, they, were, they wanted to, she wanted to just keep the attention like on her face. And so mm. we did more of an artistic 60s mod stylized look on her. But I think there's a time and a place for pushing it. But I don't think that, I don't like when I see things that don't look authentic to the person when mm. it's like a costume then I don't like it how do you for, for young people out there or also the people who've been working that knows your career and knows your path and inspired by you what advice can you give them to to help them to understand the sustainability and and integrity in this business how do you have this longevity with clients and relationship you have you well I am professional above all other things, okay? So I take it seriously. Like I wake up early, I get myself ready, and I make sure that I'm prepared and I'm early and consistent. You know, I don't just chance the fact that, you know, what we do is like, as, an, as a makeup artist, it really has to do with like me physically, like, and mentally, so if I'm, shaky because I drank too much caffeine and I've got to do a liquid eyeliner, then I'm screwed. Um, if I'm exhausted because I stayed out too late or what, drank too much or whatever, then I'm not going to be my best. And if you, want to, if you want to charge what you're worth, then you have to bring every molecule of your value to the table. I so, I love that because that, that Rachel Goodwin yesterday also echoed that uh, and Fiona as well. Being on time, it seems to be something that's very important in this industry that for you guys who want to get into it. Um, we, well, I, know, we, I noticed Rachel was a little late to the live. <laughs> she couldn't figure it out. <laughs> okay, so I know I'm not supposed to show a picture that I have no rights for, so if they make me take this down, I'm so sorry. But I really want to talk about this image that you just recently posted with Lucy Liu. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, David Bowie, it's incredible. I, I, I never got to work with him. I work with Iman, and I feel like I'm six degrees separated from, from him. But what an icon, what an incredible person and inspiration and in, in all the arts we do with music and with paintings and all of it. Um, walk us through this process. How did this idea came about? And, and ah, this is, I'm speechless. I think that this was Lucy's um, concept she wanted to do a shoot where she kind of visited different 80s and like um, iconic, iconic music people. Mm. And um, this was one of the, we did like seven looks or eight looks in a day. 
And so I had to work very, very fast. And I, um, I posted a time lapse of me doing yes. that look actually on my Instagram, but I had to do it very quickly. And so I, you know, I just had a picture and I just put the pedal to the metal. And that's, that's one of those moments. Like I could not have done that day of 18 hours or whatever we spent doing this. Like, but like, I couldn't do that if, and paint these straight lines and stuff so fast if I wasn't um, just, you know, present. Present. Well, you guys and make sure you, and just, you know, make sure everyone that you guys do go to Christopher's Instagram and there is a time lapse, uh, amazing time lapse showing the process how this amazing makeup from beginning to end. And I, and not only that, the makeup is incredible. She captured the essence of him with her eyes and, and the hair. Everything here is, is perfection. And this is, these opportunity doesn't come very often in the world that we work today that a lot of stuff is commerce driven. So when I get to see art like this, it inspires me and, and, and congratulations on that. Now I did say I, I won't show some of the work, but I do, I, I want to take a risk for us because I do think people need to see um, your brilliant work. The chance that's Christina, that you that and that's Christina. That was, shot, that was shot by Ellen von Unworth, and that is for the cover of Out magazine. And there's a snake around her neck. This um, look, well, this hat that um, Simone Harouche um, had selected for this look. Um, it was so just ar just architectural and geograph. Um, Geographic, no, not geographic. Geome um, maybe geometric, geometric. Geometric. <laughs> um, but I just felt like, with, you know, Ellen likes strong makeup, Christina likes strong makeup, I like it too. And so I just went for like a really good, strong punk kind of a vibe with it. And then on the opposite a side of it, you can give her just a beautiful glam beat. And by the way, with that punk look, um, again, we were against the clock and I have to do it very quickly. And so I remember I took, um, a, I think a matchbook or something that was like a, like a credit card. And I just literally used it as a stencil quickly to kind of get that square look. Wow. Because you gotta just get it done quick. And so these little tricks come in handy. Well, tricks are important for our viewers. What are some tips and tricks that you can give to everyone who wants to get into the industry? Well, okay, to get into the industry, I don't know these days. I mean, even the way that I got into the industry is like old Hollywood kind of story. You know, like people don't get those sorts of opportunities. Even back then they didn't. So it's just, I don't know. All I know is that if you have a passion for transformation and beauty, then you have to go for it. Oh, look at that one. That was Mariah. That was for the caution um, art. The, um, the album, and she's laying in a little pool, a shallow pool of water that was created. I love that look a lot. I, I love this picture, as a, and, and this echoes what you said earlier about you don't have to use a lot of colors to build uh -huh. a three-dimensional look. Her highlights, lowlights, and the shine is so incredibly beautiful. And this reminds me of something that a lot of people ask me how I work with people, how I work with makeup artists like you. One of the things that I, I would encourage you guys out there is that learn the vocabulary. Know what a cubic bow is. This is the cubic bow. Know what the highlight is. Know what foundation does. You don't have to know how to apply them. Know what it does because it really does help when you're on set working with somebody like Christopher or other makeup artists. When you want, as a photographer, you want a stronger brow. You don't just go, I think it needs to be dark or something because those conversations doesn't go anywhere. But you can say, if you understand, I want the eyebrow to be brushed through. I would like to see the image of just the, the, the hair to be standing oh, up. So can we grow a brush through? Or you want to pencil them down and you want to build in, or you want individual lashes versus tracks. You want double tracks. These are the things that I personally was obsessed with. When I, back in the days, looking at Kevin O'Connor's book, when I was learning how to be a photographer, I didn't learn how to shoot. I learned to understand beauty. And I think that's really, really important. And Italian Vogue was my Bible. And that's why I saw your name so much. And, and, and not to be afraid to make mistakes, obviously. And that's you not hoping to make mistakes permission. on the red carpet for makeup artists, but, but you, you have to continue to challenge yourself and make those mistakes. One of my favorite, favorite picture that you have ever done is actually this one, because I love how 
retro, yet modern, yet it was, it's everything you get on her face, but still amazing. That laser beam is so close to her mouth. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> that is um, from the Keeps Getting Better album art, and that's Ellen Von Unworth who shot that. Peter Savick on hair. I did the makeup. Um, that, yeah, I mean, it's a whole take on that 60s mod kind of a thing, but stylized, taken a step further. And um, yeah, I mean, the thing is, using a lot of makeup, people are always like, well, I, they get freaked out about a lot of makeup, but you can use a lot of makeup and it doesn't read as a lot of makeup like this one yes that is a look that i did with christina aguilera for the bionic album and um yeah i mean that is really iconic and strong but i just sculpted out her eye sockets and i made the, those eyelashes by hand well give us a little bit of a in, in depth how do you what product would you use to create that eye that, I mean, it's not that many products. I used a gray, a very violety based gray eyeshadow and taupe. And I just mm. carved out the whole inner eye socket here to strengthen the bridge of her nose. And I just carved in the whole eyelid really strong. And if you look in the center of her eyelid, I actually use a little bit of black just to really make it look really sharp there. And then I just, created a, I think I just smoked it out and then took concealer and just kind of erased it along the bottom to create a more of a linear look. And I put this picture is when I looked at this picture, first thing I thought was what a brilliant job. The lighting was gorgeous and the cleanness of the skin. And she looks so symmetrical. So well, when she you is a very, she's very symmetrical. Yes. And that was my question because Kate Moss obviously is known for a perfect symmetrical face. So as a makeup artist, when you work on something <laughs> Not so symmetrical. You, Sorry, I'm in New York. It's okay. Did you try to make their face symmetrical? I naturally cannot. Um, boy, there's some engine revving outside. <laughs> um, I, I can't help myself from adding symmetry to a face because my eye as a makeup artist, you can only do what your eye sees. And my mm -hmm. eye sees things just a certain kind of a way. I like, I'm my references are based on very classic um, faces. I love Marlena Dietrich. Mm -hmm. I love Lucille Ball. I just love um, that aesthetic. And so I'm always looking for a high cheekbone. I'm always looking for far set eyes and uh, a beautiful open brow, except on myself. <laughs> but, um, I like a full lip. I just, I just like those things. And so I just naturally I don't know, you can only do it what you see. So yeah, symmetry oh. is important and sculpture. I like everything. adding. You like sculpture, you like to sculpt. Can you, can you sculpt? I can, yes. I create usually fantasy characters. I can see that. But one of the things about Christopher I love too that you can go online and check out is that there's a little bit of sneak peek of his house. I'm hoping that we have another conversation soon that we can give a house tour because his aesthetic, the, what he does in makeup, really does carry over to your lifestyle and things around you. And oh. I am so appreciative of your energy, the way you are, that so many of us can learn from. Uh, working with divas doesn't mean you have to be one. And, and no. she exemplifies all of that. Because I, I, we're all learning in this industry, and God knows I, me too. Because there are times that that your career take you to a certain place, or you you have a blindfold on, and you forget that not just on where you came from, but how you're treating people. And then at this time that we're in right now, and reason I created this talk is so that we can all continue talking about our journey and remind us the kindness that we can spread through our art. And, and so Christopher, how do you keep yourself inspired? Now you have worked with so many people. What inspires you still every day? Hmm. I am, I think that I'm inspired by, I mean, I think I've heard other artists say this too, like where everything is inspiring because as an artist, you're not just an artist when you're creating mm. or when you're painting, it's where you live within yourself. And it's, it's like whether or not there's cars on the street, 
the traffic light is still doing its sequence. It's still doing what it does. And so it's the same kind of thing. Like even when I'm not painting a face, I'm always interacting with the world as an artist. So I'm inspired by a, colors of metallic greens and golds that are on a beetle, you know, or some sort of interesting sheen and color combination on a snake. Uh, I can see an old lady in the supermarket who literally took her fingers and created like a triangle with lipstick on her cheek. And some people are just like, that is whack. But to me, I'm like, it's whack like that. But had she just softened that one edge, you put it in a magazine and it's genius. So there's no judgment. You have to be open to everything, you know? Like I've, I, was, I make, I bake and stuff and cook. And sometimes I'll see the way a, something has browned, like a muffin browned a certain way. And I'm like, ooh, and I'll take my camera and I'll take a picture of it because I want to match that on an eye. You know, it's just, you can't, you have to be open to everything. A visual because, people. You're incredibly visual. So you're allowing everything around you influence you in one way or the other. And whether it's a, I love it. Whether you look, you're making a toast in the morning or bagel. And I'm also, <laughs> yes. um, I'm also in Los Angeles, a city with a helicopter. So guys, sorry about that. I'll give you a bagel um, eye. You'll give me, that's what I was saying. I, I, I love the idea that, that, that could be our new language. Cause you know, I love to cook and I have a cooking show in Asia. And the next time when we work together, we can say, I would love to have the Kung Pao chicken sauce foundation color, please. I'm going to give you a pork fried rice um, cheek. <laughs> oh my God. I can't wait for us to work together again. Our time's running out, but guys, if you have any questions at all, please DM Christopher uh, his Instagram um, because I will not be able to answer any questions about makeup other than the fact that we love this time and spending with him and, and I love him to come back and talk to us more. So if you have any particular work that he has done that you like him to dissect, I'm sure Christopher will be able to do that with you. Just so thank up, you guys. so much. Yes, hit him up. And you know, thank you from the bottom of my heart for for being here because what a pleasure talking to you and, and your energy is absolutely incredible and your art lives on forever and I will forever be your student when it comes to your work. Thank you so much. All right, until we have our next guest, everyone, Thank you for joining us on Let's Talk. And with this time and period that we're in, all I can do is encourage all creative people to continue talking and share what we do. Because just because we're not touching faces or taking pictures or blowing on somebody's hair, we can still be inspired to talk about what we do and share our passion with you. And thank you so much. And again, thank you, Christopher. Until we meet again. Yes. Bye-bye.